Welcome to Northeast Iowa and the Mines of Spain, a stretch of dramatic bluffs and valleys along the Mississippi River near Iowa's original settlement, Dubuque. In just a few minutes, we'll show you more of this one-time mineral oasis turned outdoor environmental destination. This may not look like Spanish soil, but a little more than 200 years ago, it was just that. Around 1788, a French-Canadian with a now famous name had just arrived to settle along these bluffs. His name was Julian Dubuque. In 1796, eight years after Julian Dubuque became the first European settler to set up shop on Iowa soil, a Spanish governor all the way down the Mississippi River in New Orleans approved a grant to work this land and its multitude of mineral deposits. For many Americans, the element lead symbolizes an industrial poison long ago removed from our gasoline and household painting supplies. But lead was once the economic engine that revved Dubuque into existence in the late 18th century. This northeastern mining town was known for its lead deposits in the decades prior to the California gold rush of the mid-19th century. But other minerals would steer business and industry to Dubuque for another 80 years. Zinc became another key element extracted from the river bluffs. Julian Dubuque died in 1810 and his remains were buried in a log mausoleum on this site. Nearly 90 years later, a new landmark was created, the Julian Dubuque Monument in 1897. It still towers above the mines of Spain, and it still contains the remains of Iowa's first European settler. In 2012, local historical groups commissioned a forensic artist to reconstruct a visual image of Julian Dubuque. Using facial restoration technology and multiple photos of Dubuque's skull, a digital representation was created. This towering turret known as the Julian Dubuque Monument is a reminder of his legacy and a visual guide to the region. From this vantage point, you'll see barges drifting down the Mississippi River, the states of Illinois and Wisconsin in the distance, and the city of Dubuque upstream. Evidence suggests Native Americans inhabited this region 8,000 years ago. Meskwaki Indians once made this waterway their home. Their village was located at the mouth of Catfish Creek, an ideal spot for fur trading with French voyagers. Flash forward 230 years, and Catfish Creek is a training ground for young paddlers. Uh, this is what's called the LEAP program. It's an after-school program for middle school uh, students here in Dubuque. So your life jacket should stay on at all times. Make sure that every buckle is fastened. Like today, we're doing, taking them out canoeing. Uh, we'll do, go snowshoeing this winter. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we were just we we're down at the wetland uh, doing some seining and just trying to, you know, catch some frogs and, and things like that. It's, it's to get them out in nature. If for some reason you do go over, we will have a throwable that looks like kind of a cushion. That is not a cushion. You're going to throw it out to the person who's in the water, okay? Catfish Creek is not that deep and we should be all good. Okay, I want you to sit down, both of you to sit down on the dock and put your feet in the canoe. And go ahead and get in. And for some of them, uh, this is really the first time they've ever, you know, like been in a canoe today. It's more important to get the kids outdoors, get them away from the computer, the TV, and just even if they're in their own backyard, they're out, they're outdoors and they're you know being more active than, than just sitting. 